Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Box 13, Careless Star Times. If your advertisement, Adventure Wanted, will go any place, do anything, is bona fide, do this. Call Yorkside 89078 and ask for Dr. Ogden. Make an appointment with him. Then phone Madison 9548 and ask for Mr. Alexander. When you've done these two things, you will receive further instructions. I will wait until 3 tomorrow afternoon. Receive further instructions. I will wait until 3 tomorrow afternoon for your call. If you want money, I can arrange that. If you want adventure only, this will give it to you. There was no signature, so I assumed the letter was from the mysterious Mr. Alexander, who liked telephones. I was right. It was his nickel and a million dollars worth of trouble. And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, The Clay Pigeon. I wonder why you're to make an appointment with a doctor, Mr. Holliday. I don't know, Susie, but it's a very interesting letter. I'll tell you what, suppose you dial the first number for me, and we'll get in touch with Dr. Ogden. Uh-huh. Let's see, that was Yorkside. Eight, nine, oh, seven... Eight. When you get the number, ask for Dr. Ogden, Susie. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello. Dr. Ogden, please. This is Dr. Ogden speaking. Oh, uh, thank you. Just a minute. He's on the line. Answered the phone himself. Oh, thanks. Hello, Dr. Ogden. Yes. I'd like to make an appointment to see you. Uh huh? Today? Well, let's say at your convenience. Well, uh, would tomorrow be all right with you? Fine. What time? Two o'clock sharp. Two o'clock sharp. Fine. You know the address? Well, no, you'd better give it to me. Certainly. 7869 River Lane Terrace. Oh, just a second. Susie. Uh Uh-huh? Take this down. That was 7869 River Lane Terrace. Yes, that's it. Okay, tomorrow at two, then. I'll be waiting for you. Oh, just a second, Doctor. Yes? Don't you want to know who I am? No. (laughs) I prefer to find it out my way. Goodbye. What do you say? I don't know, but it sounded like I prefer to find it out my way. Well, what's he mean by that? Uh, I wish I knew. Let's call that other number, Madison 9548. Want me to get it for you? Might as well. There's no fun being on first base if there's a chance of scoring. Go ahead. Now, what kind of a doctor prefers to find out the names of his patients his own way? Mr. Alexander? Yes, who's this? Just a second. Here he is, a party of the second part. Oh, okay. Hello, this is Box 13, Mr. Alexander. Oh, yes, sir. Did you call Dr. Ogden? Yes, I did. I have an appointment with him for 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Good. Will you keep it? Well, that all depends on what's going to happen next. I think you'll like it. Now, uh, can you remember a name and a message? Well, I think so. I have remembered my own name for a long time. <laughs> Good. Here's the name. Listening? I'm still here. Matthew Carey. Did you get it? Matthew Carey, right? Yes. Now, remember this. The dead shall not stay dead. Did you hear it? I thought you said the dead shall not stay dead. That's correct. It's not difficult to remember. You're right, Mr. Alexander. But now that I have the name Matthew Carey in the message, what do I do with him? I think you'll know what to do when you see Dr. Ogden. Goodbye. Hey, Alexander. Hey. He hung up, huh? Yeah, he hung up. Susie, this is either a big rib or it starts out as one of the craziest chases I've ever had. Well, all you can do is see Dr. Ogden tomorrow at 2. Yeah, see Dr. Ogden tomorrow at 2. Okay, Susie, hung for a sheep as well as a lamb. Dr. Ogden will see me tomorrow. So, the next day at 2 o'clock sharp, I pushed a bell button underneath the neat little brass plate that said Dr. Ogden... I waited, and the door clicked and swung open by itself. I stood in a dimly lighted hall. I was getting accustomed to the lights when the door closed behind me. Then I heard... Please come down the hall. Hmm? Where are you? Second door to your left as you walk this way down the hall away from the front door. Please come in. Oh, thank you. How 
do you do? Please close the door and come in. Thank you again. I'm very happy to see that you're prompt. You're the gentleman who called yesterday about two o'clock, yes? Yes, I called about that time. Good. Please be seated across the table from me. Now, may I ask who sent you to me? A mutual friend. May I ask the name of this mutual friend? Mr. Alexander. I don't seem to recall that name. Alexander? Alexander. Yes, Alexander. Well, no matter. You are Dr. Ogden. Yes, why do you ask? Well, I had no way of recognizing you, Doctor. For all I know, you may be someone else. I see you're a skeptic. About what? Don't you know? Huh? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, Shall we proceed? By all means, I'm very anxious to proceed, but first my name is... Please, please don't tell me. I have other ways of finding that out. Oh? First, we shall dim the lights. I control them from my chair here. You can still see me? Very dimly. Your eyes will become accustomed to this light in a moment. Now, there's a drawer on your side of the table. Please open it. You'll find a pad of paper and some pencils in there. Select any pencil and take the pad of paper. Okay, I've done it. Close the drawer. (laughs) Now, what do I do? Please write your name on one of the slips of paper from the pad, anyone. Underneath your name, write a question. Some problem that is worrying you. I shall attempt to advise you. I hope your skepticism does not interfere with our rapport. Wait a minute. You mean you're a... I... What were you going to say? Let me get this straight. I'm to write my name on a slip of paper. Yes, and underneath any message, question, problem. Mm-hmm. Name. And a message. All right, that's done. Now what? Fold the slip of paper and place it under the teacup in the center of the table. There you are, Dr. Ogden. Good, good. We shall have to dim the lights a little more. More. I am trying to establish contact with your mind. I am trying to feel the psychic rapport between us. Think. Think of your name and the message. Think of them. Oh, I see that your name is Matthew Carey. No, no. Who are you? Where did you come from? Now, wait a minute, Dr. Ogden. Take it easy. Get out. Get out. You're crazy. You know nothing. Get out. Calm down a minute, will you? Why should my name make you jump out of your chair like that? It's not your name. Please, you don't know anything. You can't know. What's the matter with you, Doctor? Please get out of here. Go. Well, all right. But how did you know what name was on that slip of paper under the teacup? I said get out or I'll have you thrown out. Well, for an invitation like that, what else is there to do? I left Dr. Ogden feeling a little as though I'd struck a match and a house a mile away went up in flames. Who was Matthew Carey? More important at the moment, who was... Mr. Alexander. I stepped into a drugstore on the way back to my office. Dialed Madison 9548. No, Mr. Alexander. It was a payphone in a market. It seemed that Mr. Alexander had sat patiently waiting for my call to him. Later in my apartment. Hello? Ah, oh, Mr. Holiday. Ah, oh, Mr. Alexander. Yes. Which market are you calling from now? (laughs) So you called back, eh? Yes, I called back. Look, Alexander, if it was your intention to frighten Dr. Ogden out of his next ten years, you did. It was my intention, Mr. Holliday. Wait a minute. You know my name, my telephone number here at my apartment. How come? I saw you go into Dr. Ogden's. When you came out, I followed you. (laughs) Very simple. Elementary. Okay, suppose we go to a little higher learning now. Who is Matthew Carey? And why did that name and message frighten Ogden out of his wits? Are you interested, Mr. Holliday? I think so, Mr. Alexander. But I'd like to know what the game is. Will you go on with it? I'll admit it has its points. Good. Well, then, you saw the reaction the name and message got from Dr. Ogden. The electric chair would have been a little less irritating to him. Then play along. He'll undoubtedly come to see you or try to contact you in some way. See him, talk with him. 
But whatever he says or does, don't let on what you're doing. Mr. Alexander, that is the simplest thing in the world for me to do because I haven't the least idea what it is I'm doing. When he contacts you, be mysterious. Pretend you know something. What makes you think that I'm that good an actor? Please do it. You won't be sorry. I still think it's a rib, a joke. Oh, it is, Mr. Holliday. But the joke is on our friend Dr. Hockton. Oh, he's not laughing. He doesn't have a sense of humor. But will you play along for just a little while longer? If you'll uh, tell me one thing. And what's that? Where does it all end? And what good is it doing you? I'm not sure where it will end. As for the good it does me, it will keep me from being killed. Good night. <laughs> Now, back to The Clay Pigeon, another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, Mr. Alexander's last word sat me up straight. I wanted to go to the police, but with what? I'd never seen Mr. Alexander, and as far as I knew, he had a lot of nickels to put in phone slots. He'd never give me a chance to trace a call, so I sat tight and waited. And I didn't have too long to wait, because that same night... Yes, who is it? Uh, Dr. Ogden. Mr. Holliday, may I see you? Oh, Dr. Ogden. Just a second. How did you find me? Psychic rapport? Uh, no, I, I followed you earlier this afternoon. Oh, did you have company? Company? Skip it. Is there something on your mind, Dr. Ogden? Yes. Look here... Why did you come to me this afternoon? Maybe, maybe because of Matthew Carey. How did you know? Who are you? You followed me here. You came to my apartment. You, you ought to know my name. Yes, Holiday, but that isn't your real name. For heaven's sake, man, will you please talk? I'd like a little time to think it over. Then you haven't gone to the police? No, no, I haven't. You want me to? Are you crazy? How much do you think I know, Dr. Ogden? Look, Holiday, or whatever your name is, I, I'm willing to pay you to keep quiet. You must realize, of course, I don't have to pay you a cent. Oh, of course you don't. But I, uh, I want no bad publicity. Be bad for my business. Now, how much? I told you I want some time to think it over. How long? I'll let you know when I'm ready to talk business with you. Meanwhile, you, you'll not go to the police? No, Dr. Ogden, I won't go to the police. Thank you. Thank you. I assure you, Mr. Holliday, you won't be sorry. I hope not. Now, good night, Dr. Ogden. Good night, and you will let me hear from you. I promise just as soon as I come to a conclusion. Then, good night. For a moment, I stood there after Ogden left. I listened to make sure he had gone. Then I stepped out into the hall and down the stairs into the lobby. Ogden was out of sight. But to make sure, I asked the clerk. Yes, I saw him, Mr. Holliday. He's gone. Mm -hmm, thanks. There was no one with him. I didn't see anyone. Okay, I'm going to step outside for a minute. Be right back. Hold any calls that come. Yes, sir, Mr. Holliday. There was no one inside on the sidewalk. The traffic was thin. I was almost sure that Ogden hadn't come alone. Why, I don't know. But I walked a little piece down the street. I was about 50 yards away from my apartment building when... Psst. Mr. Holliday! Holliday! Huh? Who is it? Alexander. Where are you? In his doorway. I didn't want Ogden to see me. Please come here. Come on out. Let me take a look at you. No, I've got to be sure Ogden doesn't see me. He's gone. I can't take the chance. Now, please come here. I want to tell you something. I... All right. Okay, what have you got to tell me? This. <laughs> Feeling better now, Mr. Holliday? Oh, how'd I get back in the lobby? I found you. How did you happen to be looking for me? Well, there was a call for you. I stepped out on the pavement and saw some, someone lying in that doorway. Yes, and there I was, all tucked away. The original clay pigeon, Dan Holliday. Shall I call the police? No, wait a minute. You've, you've got your wallet. Uh-huh. My watch, my change, my ring. There's, there's nothing missing? No, not a thing missing. Well, that's funny. The word you want is peculiar. It's anything but funny anymore. But I would like to know why he slugged me and then left me with all my money and... 
Your, your keys. Have you got all of them? Yeah. Yeah, they're all here, but... But look at this one, Charlie. You see anything? Uh, well, yeah, there's, there's some green stuff on it. Mm-hmm. Modeling clay. Looks like it. So Mr. Alexander wanted to make an impression of this key to my office. Why? Charlie, someday I'm going to catch up with Mr. Alexander and get an answer to a lot of questions. What did Mr. Alexander want in my office? The only way to find that out was to go there. I called Susie, got her out of bed, and an hour later met her at the office. Gee, I was scared when you called, Mr. Holliday. Yeah, but I needed you to take a look around this office, see if anything's missing. You take that side of the room, Susie. I'll find come over here. But there's nothing here worth stealing. File cabinets are still locked. None of them forced? They don't look like it. Open them and look inside. All right. Not a paper disturbed, not even a pencil out of place. Okay, I'm crazy. I give up. How about the cabinets, Susie? Gee, they're just like I left them when I went home. I remember straightening them today because I wanted to find them. Okay, let's forget it. You know what I think, Mr. Holliday? No, what do you think, Susie? I think Mr. Alexander is a lunatic. Well, tell him to move over. He's getting company. The guy slugs me, makes an impression on my office key, and... And now what? You know, Mr. Holliday, I think you ought to find out about... about that Matthew Carey. Hey, that's an idea, Susie. Okay, pack up and go home now. Tomorrow, you and I are going to the morgue of the Star Times, and we'll see what we shall see. <laughs> It took Susie and me the better part of two hours to dig through old files. But finally we came up with something. Susie read a paragraph to me. A paragraph from a Sunday supplement. The murder of Matthew Carey has never been solved. The only suspect was Marvin Smith, who disappeared mysteriously and has never been located. Carey and Smith were partners in a mind-reading and psychic act, and, and they... Hold it, Susie. Did that give you a hint? More. It tells me Dr. Ogden's real name. Marvin Smith. Susie, Ogden is a mysteriously disappeared suspect. Sure, but who is Mr. Alexander? Go ahead, go ahead, read some more. Okay. Matthew Carey's body was claimed by a brother, Philip Carey. Philip, at his brother's inquest, was dramatic in his denunciation of police and in his vow to track down his brother's killer. Later, he too disappeared. The Matthew Carey case remains another famous unsolved murder. Gee... Dr. Ogden killed Matthew Carey. Yeah, that's the way it looks. Now, all I've got to figure out is what I'm doing in the act. Why did Philip Carey send me to Dr. Ogden in the first place? To scare him. Uh, that was only part of it. Obviously, Susie, Carey, or Mr. Alexander, as I shall fondly remember him, wanted to make Ogden think that someone was on to him. But why pick on me? <laughs> Later, I called the police and let them know that Dr. Ogden and Marvin Smith were one and the same. Or at least I thought they were. The police went in to see him, but once more he had dropped off the face of the earth. And I looked like a prize sap for giving the tip off. Then that afternoon... Want me to answer it, Mr. Holliday? I better let me take it, Susie. Hello. Holliday? Yeah. Dr. Ogden, isn't it? Yes. Where have you been? Listen to me. I, I agree to your terms. You, you what? I said I agree to your terms. Oh, you agree to my terms? Well, that's nice. I can't talk any longer. I've got to go now. But I agree to your terms. Goodbye. Ogden, Ogden. You know, Susie, someday I'm going to have that instrument taken out and thrown in the river. Is something the matter? Yes, yeah, something's the matter, and it's all with me. That was Dr. Ogden, huh? That was Dr. Ogden. And he agrees to my terms. He agrees to your terms? What terms? That's the question, Susie. What terms? No. Oh, no, not again. I'll answer it. No, I brought this on myself. I'll take it. Hello. Good afternoon, Mr. Holliday. Well, Mr. Alexander, how do you do? How's your head? How would your head be after a bolero was drummed out on it? Oh, I'm very sorry I had to do that, but it was necessary. Alexander, if I could only see you just once. How would you like to do just that tonight? Well, what do you mean? Meet me at midnight tonight at the corner of Bay Boulevard and Shore Drive. It's a pretty lonely neighborhood. What's the idea? You'd like to see this finished, wouldn't you? 
Yes. Yes, I would. Then meet me, but uh, come alone. Absolutely alone, understand? What if I don't? <laughs> I'll be very disappointed in you. Goodbye. What now, Mr. Holliday? Good question, Susie. I've already made the police think I'm a little off by sending them after Ogden. Okay, I'll meet Mr. Alexander tonight. But not before I do a lot of thinking. <laughs> So I thought, and thought, and made up my mind to meet Alexander. But I also made up my mind to get there ahead of time. So I drove to within three blocks of Bay Boulevard and Shore Drive, parked and began to walk quietly. I stayed in the shadows and made sure I wasn't being followed. Then, then I saw him. A man crouched behind a billboard. Someone had the same idea I had. Get there early and avoid the rush. Well, at last, I was going to meet Mr. Alexander, but not face to face. I crept up in back of him and... Uh, Easy, Alexander. Take it easy. Holiday. Huh? Ogden. Please. I was going to meet you as you asked. I I was just seeing if everything was clear. Meet me? At Bay Boulevard and Shore Drive? Yes, that's what he said. I said? Let that go for a minute. Why are you waiting a block away from the corner? Why, I told you I just wanted to see if all was clear. Hold still a minute. Oh, nice gun you've got here, Dr. Ogden. Was I going the way of Matthew Carey? No, no, I I swear it. Look, see? I brought the money. $5,000, as you said in your letter. Letter? What letter? This one. Give it to me. And stand a little distance from me. Do, Do you want more? I'll get it. Only please, don't kill me. Please. Shut up. Was this letter sent to you? Yes, I... Why are you asking that? Oh, now I get it. I think. Huh? Look, Ogden, it's still 20 minutes before midnight. And you're going to do what I say. Walk to the meeting place. I'll join you at midnight. And you pass over the money. But I'll keep your gun just in case. What are you talking about? You'll do as I say or we'll go to the police right now. Mr. Marvin Smith. Smith? Oh, that hit home, didn't it? Okay, we wait ten minutes, and you start at the meeting place. At midnight, I walked toward the corner. It was very dark, and I could just make out Ogden's silhouette. Holiday. Yeah. Now, remember what you're to do. Hand me that package of money. It's here. Now, as I walk away, I'll... I'll fire your gun. I'll drop to the pavement. You stand right there. Get it? Yes. Okay. Here goes. (laughs) Who? Who who is it? Hello, Smith. Philip. (laughs) Philip Carey. You did just exactly what I thought you'd do, Smith. You killed him. (laughs) Now I'm going to kill you as you killed Matthew. Don't move. Keep your back toward me. Now take a moment, Smith. Take a moment to think how it must have felt to my brother. But now... Drop that gun, Carey. You... Drop it. You dirty meddler. Ogden, quick, down, drop. You shot him, Holiday. Just in the hand. Killed Matthew... Let me get at him. The police will take care of him and you. And I'll be glad to see it. Because I don't like being a clay pigeon. Now let's get going, both of you. I've got to explain a few things to my secretary. Mr. Alexander, or or Philip Carey, took just one piece of stationery and wrote Ogden a blackmail letter on your typewriter. That's why we found nothing missing. Right, Susie. One piece of paper wouldn't be missed. But if it hadn't been for the clay on the key, I I wouldn't have known he even got in here. But what was he going to do? It was a beautiful setup, Susie. He sent Ogden the blackmail letter. Ogden thought I sent it and was blackmailing him. Ogden was set to kill me, which is just what Alexander or Carrie wanted. Okay, so Ogden kills me. 
Then Alexander steps in, kills Ogden, puts the gun in my dead little hand, and goes away for good. And then? And what did the police find? $5,000 in my pocket, a blackmail letter to Ogden written on my stationery, my typewriter. It's an open and shut case, shut right on my neck. Aha, but there's one thing wrong. What? I could have testified differently. I I knew the whole thing. Alexander wouldn't have gotten away with it. I, um, I don't like to keep things from you, Susie, but but I was going to. Hmm? What? Mr. Alexander would have come after you. Mr. Holliday, let's take the ad out of the Star Times for a while. Then what will we do for excitement? (laughs) Good night, Susie. Listen in again next week when, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville, and this week's original story was written by Russell Hughes. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager, and the part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount picture.